Well, Moeed Yusuf is the director of the South Asia programs in the United States Institute of Peace, and he joins us now from Islamabad. So what's the atmosphere like there where you are? It's actually pretty calm. Uh, there were some concerns earlier um, if the prime minister and his party would accept the verdict, um, if the streets would remain as calm as they have. But really, they have. I mean, he hasn't put up a fight. Thankfully, he's accepted the verdict. Uh, of course, the opposition has declared victory, and there are, you know, uh, any number of press conferences going on as as we speak with the opposition uh, saying why they think this is a great moment in Pakistan's democratic history. Uh, the government saying that they have reservations but that they will follow the court's orders. Uh, but it's clear that the prime minister is in trouble, uh, or the former prime minister now. Uh, there are now references against him and his party in, in accountability court. Uh, so this will drag on for the next six months. Uh, he'll have to appoint a new prime minister. It'll have to go through parliament, a new cabinet. Uh, so this is, this is messy for, for the ruling party right now. OK, so they've got to appoint a new prime minister, but we've got a general election scheduled for next year. What are the implications for his party? You know, it's it's a very interesting moment. Um, if, if you look at where he stands now, he has to, almost has to declare political martyrdom uh, going into the next election. So I suspect he's going to take to the street. He's going to argue to the people that have done many things for the country. The economy had picked up. People did agree that this tenure was much better than the last government's. He is popular, so he's going to try and cash in on that. The other problem, of course, then, uh, is that his entire family is um, disqualified for the most part, uh, for now at least. So who is he going to appoint? Is that person going to be a loyalist? And can the party hold together if they feel that Nawaz Sharif is going to lose the grip over this election, given that the opposition is ascendant. So these are all the questions. I personally feel Nawaz Sharif still, his party has the edge going into the next elections. I think the elections will be on time, uh, but there is a year to go. And if the accountability court uh, proves corruption against him and his family, then things may turn. So it's early to say, but very tough times ahead for him. What are the implications more widely? Because the Supreme Court, there's this sense, isn't there, perhaps, that it's cracking down on corruption. Surely that augurs well for uh, democracy in the country. Um, yes and no. Uh, this, is, this is a complicated case. So, you know, what's happened is that the prime minister has been disqualified not on corruption charges, but on charges of lying under oath. Um, the corruption charges, as I said, have been referred to an accountability court, and we'll find out in six months uh, whether he is charged and proven guilty under that. If the court comes back and says that he is not guilty, then I think the, the Supreme Court has opened a Pandora's box where now the Nawaz Sharif party is going to bring their opposition um, to court again and start talking about them having, you know, offshore companies or lied under oath somewhere else. So the bar is so low for disqualification that I fear that there is a scenario where this would become a political witch hunt with political actors going after each other and Pakistan falling into some kind of political instability over the next year. We'll have to wait and see. Let's Let's hope that doesn't happen. But I want to be clear that he has not been disqualified on a corruption charge. This is on a charge of lying or uh, misrepresenting um, the facts under oath.